Hi, it's Brendan Chapman here from Strength and Conditioning Education and I'm here with bench press maestro Ali Jawad. How are you, mate? I'm good. Good. And we're in the home. This is an exclusive. You, you changed to an MMA now, MMA sport. <laughs> we, we, we're doing an interview off the map. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's not an exclusive. We're going to talk about mindset, building a champion's mind and really excited to get Ali in to share some, some insights. But first, before we get into that, You've come back from Rio, you've come back with some, some silverware. Yeah. How was the experience? Um, to, to be honest, it's been that kind of, that busy since that I've actually not sat down and thought about it. Yeah. I think over Christmas, I might kind of sit down by myself in a room, look at the medal and go, right, that is taking a lot of work to get this and should appreciate what I've done. Yeah. Because I think right now I don't really appreciate it because I've been so busy. Yeah. Yeah, it has been a whirlwind for you as well. Every time I catch up with you, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're a Liverpool Football Club. That must have been amazing for you. That was probably as good as the middle. Yeah, like to, really. To, yeah, to meet Klopp <laughs> on the pitch is yeah. just oh, it's unbelievable. That's awesome. And the last leg as well. You're on the last leg. Yeah, How was that? Um, I was on the last leg. I think twice. Yeah. Um, um, in Rio, and that was that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. They do have a right good laugh. Yeah, that's it. That's good. That's good. And and you're right that. You mean you look at that medal and it's all that hard work, but that's not just four years. That's not just one cycle. That's a lifetime, isn't it? Well, for me, it's my third attempt. So that's that's eleven years of you know committing myself to a sport. You know the lifestyle, the commitment, the sacrifice you have to put in, mm -hmm. the setbacks that I've had. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, like it means kind of it means so much more than I want to say more than the other medals because the other medals were the, you know were kind of like it led to the, the Paralympic silver, but the amount of effort that's gone into it, the, the Paralympics, it's just, um, you can't really describe it. No, and I see that from working with you and, and we worked a little bit together in our gym back in Leeds and see that hard work going in and the the grind that goes in every day. But the, the thought and the science and the understanding and the train behind that is there. Um, but you see it and it's a nice reward. I'm sure you can appreciate that a lot, can't you now? But, well, yeah, um, it was like, a, it was a relief, but yeah, I need to like sit down and really kind of try and appreciate what, what, what happened. Yeah. So your story is really, really inspiring and, and it's it's something that when when you did a workshop for us a number of years ago now actually, time has flown oh, yeah. by, has three hasn't years. It? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. But it was really well received that component and, and to think like because remember chatting to you before and you were like, what should I say? What should I share? So would you mind just giving us an insight essentially how you've got to where you are now and some of the challenges that you faced? So um I think that the big thing that I'm known for is having Crohn's disease. Um, I got sick the night before I competed at my first Paralympic Games in Beijing. Um, came ninth. It wasn't really my best performance. I thought I caught a bug in the village, but it turned out to be much worse than that. Um, obviously came back home, had nine months of, of tests, and it turned out to be Crohn's. Um, Obviously, at the time, being so young, you don't appreciate what Crohn's is. You just kind of go, right, give me a pill, give me an injection, I'll go home. And um, the, you know, the, the doctor was quite adamant that, you know, this is, this is going to change your life forever. Um, this isn't just a, a temporary thing. And you have to kind of prepare for what's about to come. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he kind of indirectly said I should retire um, completely from sport, kind of try and live a normal life. Because it's, you know, a, a lot of Crohn's sufferers don't live a normal life. It's cause hard, so yeah. So um, you know, I kind of retired for six months because I was so ill. I tried to come back, and it was kind of up and down for about a year until I had the operation. So yeah, I've had to come back from you know a massive setback. Mm. And if you don't mind, give us a kind of couple of those insights into some of those dark days, those challenges that you faced back then. Oh, I think it's, it's weird how to describe it. Is like imagine being. I was like, I was 19, going to my first Paralympic Games. I was living the dream, you know, full-time athlete, just training, kind of doing, kind of, you know, something that nobody at my age was doing. Mm. And suddenly, within 24 hours, you know, like you're sick, you don't know what's wrong with you, you can't, you can barely get out of bed. Mm. It's kind of, a, it's a massive change. 24 hours, the process. So when I got diagnosed, it was a relief, but at the same time, I didn't appreciate the amount of work I had to do to try and fight the disease. Mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of naive because I thought I could still do what I'm doing and still get through it. But actually, it, you know, the disease beat me on a few occasions mm -hmm. and um, well, probably more more so than I kind of had control over it. Yeah. And yeah, it, I, was, I took, I think, 
so a two year a two year break from the sport to try and try to get back just healthy because I was I wasn't I wasn't healthy at all. Um, it, you know, in two thousand and ten, the surgery kind of saved my life. Um, I was I was so bad I could have I could have died. Yeah. So for me to even attempt to come back was was it was a big deal because um, not many people supported my my comeback uh, yeah. my comeback. So that's great, man. That's well. Look at where you're at now and the yeah. contrast. And do you? Is there a part of you you can look back at some of those struggles and those challenges and sort of they are attributed to some of the success that you're now experiencing? I think um, obviously when I first started, I felt like I, f I did think I was mature, but in fact, looking back, I, I really wasn't. You know, for, for me to mature as a man and a human being, not just an athlete, something like that had to happen for me to kind of realise what I was capable of. Um, just like you know, the tools that I had, I didn't kind of realise back then. And I guess Crohn's has made me realise, like, you know, I can get through adversity. I can, I can, you know, be committed. I can put things into place. I can fight really, really hard and not give up on, on certain things um, if I believe if I believe I can do it. Mm. I think Crohn's kind of matured me as, you know, as a human being, and I kind of needed it for me to move on in my life, mm. which which is, which is weird for me to say, but yeah, it kind of, you know, it's kind of been a blessing in disguise in some ways. Mm. It's it's crazy that that's that's the case, but I can totally see where you're coming from there it's, it's like it's it's taught you it's it's given you some learnings hasn't it yeah amazing and so what's your sort of what's what's the olympic or the olympian mindset what what qualities do you feel that you now possess and you perhaps had a, a glimmer of them back in the day but they've hardened up or they've you fostered them and you've nurtured them and you've worked hard what are the key things that you feel that set you apart and, and I suppose in general champions and elite athletes and elite performers I think um, for me when I first started I kind of like you you know you want to you think you you know it all when you first started um, so when I first started I thought you know I was, I was really good at what I was doing but then when you get to world-class competition so when you're a junior competing against the senior guys it completely changes it throws you and you can you think oh my god actually I think I'm really good but actually I'm actually not that great at all like these guys are amazing and I was lucky from a young age where I was competing at senior events and I realized the standard I had to be at I didn't kind of I wasn't really kind of protected and kind of stayed in the junior ranks I kind of kind of I was kind of thrown into the senior ranks straight away so I knew the standard I had to be at to compete with these guys in five ten years and I guess for, for me like to be an elite athlete, you have to be patient because back then I wasn't patient at all. I was very frustrated that I wasn't as good as them, yeah. even though I was 15 years younger, yeah. which is silly now to think about it. But like, you know, I felt upset, angry that I wasn't good enough. So because of that, you kind of push yourself to limits that you shouldn't really push yourself to because you're trying to catch up mm. and you shouldn't do because you're so young. I'm trying to rush it almost. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, like the one thing that I've really learned was is patience mm -hmm. with myself yeah. because, yeah. you know, as long as you keep doing the right things on a consistent basis, you will get there. It's just going to take a longer time. I didn't really realise that as a kid. Mm. It's a huge learning. It's a because yeah. I, I, I feel that a little bit about myself as well. I, I'm generally quite an impatient person, yeah. and um, I want everything yesterday, yesterday yeah. not even tomorrow. And I've learned that as well. That patience, and you've got to work with. It's, it's the mindset to. to to break things down and actually actually accept that that won't come tomorrow, that no. won't come next month. It's, it potentially will take a year, yeah. two years, five years. Well, but you yeah. commit to it, don't well, you? Medals don't come overnight, do they? They, no. take, they take a very long time. But at that age, you don't really appreciate how hard it is to, to work for it. Mm. But yeah, now, like 11 years on, I think I'm more kind of chilled out about things. Like I know that you know if I if I'm doing the right things, it it, it won't it won't you know it, it won't. It's not guaranteed to happen, but it gives me a better chance of it happening. Mm. And I, I, can, I can accept the fact that if I do come, come short, I don't really regret it as much because I've given it everything. Yeah. Where before, I used to be so frustrated with myself. Yeah, sure. And so patience is a, a sort of evolution for you, a, a new learning and an applied learning. What things or what qualities do you feel you, you've, I suppose you've always had that, have, that run right through you that have also helped you to become a champion and, and to become the person you are today? I think, um, for me, the last maybe like eight years, I've tried to kind of, whatever's, whatever's kind of happened in my life that's been quite bad, 
I've tried to kind of look past it and go, right, this has happened now. Can I control it? Well, no. Dump it. Mm. I've, I've kind of, kind of like, I've kind of had this mentality where when I was a bit younger, any little thing happens, it affects me. Even at major championships, if somebody says something or does something, it completely throws me. Mm -hmm. For me, like, as a kid, things had to, the environment had to be perfect for me to compete properly, mm. which that shouldn't be the case. You should be able to compete at a high level all the time, no matter what. Mm. And I guess the last eight years, I've learned that you can only control what you can control. You, you know, you can't let other things kind of, the other things that you can't control affect you. Mm. I guess that's the one thing I've learned during like international um, international comps. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, it's it's a good one that because that's absolutely uh, again it's another one that I can sort of see that you just got to adapt. You've got to be adaptable as an athlete, haven't yeah. you, and be able to show your stuff, w whatever those conditions are like. Well, that's what that's what makes you know the top champions. Um, you know, any any situation they'll they'll get through it. Yeah. Mm. So what's next? What's your plans? It's I mean it's still kind of fresh after the Olympics. Only eight weeks. You've been you've been flying around the world doing all this stuff and, and rightly relaxing and getting some time off. What's what's on your agenda now? Um, so I think it's not a secret anymore, but I want to compete able-bodied uh, next year. Yeah. So the Arnold the Arnold Classics in America next year, mm. um, which I'd, li I'd like to go to myself to qualify for. Um, now because of the competition calendar for IPC powerlifting, it won't come out till December, so I'm not going to really know what competitions um, are going to be like next year until the ca calendar comes out. But if it all works for me, I'd love to go to the Arnold Classic next year. Um, I'd like to also go to the IPF um, Classic Bench Press World Championships. And I, I don't think, and you know, to compete against the best able-bodied lifters in the world, um, I don't think any, I don't know if any Paralympians ever actually won an able-bodied world title. Yeah. So for me to come over from the pa para events yeah. to take on the best guys is going to be, yeah. it's going to be big. That's cool. That's really exciting. And so what what drives you now then? Because you, you've you've been to three Olympics, yeah. you've achieved at them, and there's more medals and there's always more medals. But what's what's the fire burning inside you? What what are your values? What what's really keeping you getting hitting the gym hard and, and getting back into it? I think um, for me, I think as I said, I think. To, to win a Paralympic gold medal for me, I've had that dream since I was six. And for me, like, I've not, I've not done that yet. Mm. Now, I've won, I won silver eight weeks ago and I just feel like I'm at an age where the next four years are going to be my peak years. And if I don't kind of carry on and at least find out what my peak is, then I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to achieve a gold medal. Mm. Yeah, so for me, like, a gold medal um, at, in Tokyo is something that I'm really like yeah. really want to kind of pursue but That's it's going it's, it's to be so hard like yeah. the guys I'm up against they're you know, they're, they're, they're very very good mm. it's going to take a lot of work to try and get near them mm. yeah but that's great that you, it's there for you, it's, it's tangible, you can see it and yeah. that's one thing that a lot of people struggle with, they kind of a lot of people are actually afraid to say I want that, I, I'm going to go and get it because it makes you, there's a chance that you might not get that yeah, and well, the, the chances are that I probably might not get it because you know the, the guys that are in front of me, they're, they're they're a little bit older than me, but they're at an age where they can still kind of peak in 2020. They're, mm -hmm. they're still good enough yes. to hold their peak until that to to that age. So, for me, something massive has got to happen for me to beat them. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I know I have to kind of accept the fact that I'm going to come very close, but it's more likely that I might I might miss out. But if I don't try, you, just, you never know. You never know, do you? Yeah, absolutely. And anything can happen in, in their lives over the next cycle well, yes, and, yeah. and even at the event itself. Yeah. You know, that's it. It's, it's going to be, you've got to be in it to win it, as they say. Well, exactly, yeah. It? That's awesome, mate. Nice. No, really good to hear your story. Good to catch up. We're going to follow that journey over the next four or five years or however long and, and beyond. And um, thank you for being one of our brand ambassadors and, and helping us out. I know you believe in strength and conditioning and it's been a big part of your own development and you've even got some coaching experience and, and, and love that as a part of your background as well, haven't you? So yeah, thank you. it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, thanks again, Ali. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you for watching. Really insightful interview. Mindset of an Olympian, mindset of a champion and the, the struggles and the successes that everybody faces. We'll be back again soon with another interview. Thanks again.